The Ultimate Hacking Keyboard has excellent software that enables you to easily remap keys to your liking, create layers to boost ergonomics, and create basic macros to avoid annoying repetitive tasks. But did you know that it also supports advanced smart macros? What are smart macros? Well, think of it as a scripting language that unlocks all kinds of new behaviors, specifically tailored to your unique needs and desires. The best part of macros is that they're hardware-based, meaning they're stored on your keyboard's onboard memory, so these macros have no software limitations. It travels wherever your keyboard goes, whether it's at home, at the office, your Windows PC, or your Mac OS laptop. Best of all, you never have to set up any sketchy macro software that runs in the background. But learning the nuances of this smart macro language can be a little bit overwhelming. But don't worry, you don't need to be a C programmer to create macros, unlike some of the alternative keyboard firmwares like QMK. Stay tuned towards the end of this video where I share how you can create your own scripts without any programming knowledge using the power of GPT-4. First, let me inspire you with some of my favorite macros. Let's start with a simple macro that combines scripting and UHK's agent GUI macro setup as a warm-up. One of my most used basic macros is one that creates an opening and closing backtick, triple backtick, which is a common way to represent code in Markdown. I use this all the time when I want to paste code into any text editor, like ChatGPT's text area. These back tips help the LLM better understand the code snippet since it acts as a distinct delimiter for your code. So instead of having to manually type back tick, back tick, back tick three times, space, enter your code, and then back tick, back tick three times, all I need to do is just quickly long press my tilde or my back tick key, and automatically it's going to create that format with the cursor ready to paste in the code, whatever you have in your copy paste buffer. So you'll notice by this script and the way that I binded it to my tilde key is that I've intuitively bound it to pressing the tilde key or the back key. So by assigning this macro to the back tick key, it is very intuitive. I know that if I tap it once, I'm gonna produce a regular back tick. And if I long press it, I'm gonna invoke this macro because they're both related characters. This means you can easily extend the functionality of less commonly used keys while still preserving its original behavior. The only drawback is that you obviously can no longer spam this key to type a back tick repeatedly, but that's something I would never do. You'll notice later in this video, I use this technique a lot for other different keys, giving them dual functionality while still preserving my original typing behavior. And by the way, you can even extend this macro to paste whatever you recently copied within the back tick. I actually use this technique for my other macro where I want to ask ChatGPT to proofread my text with very specific instructions. This macro doesn't have a dual functionality since it's bound to an esoteric layered key. So creating this macro is done entirely in the GUI like so. So here's my collection of macros and you can see I have quite a lot of macros. Uh, so let's go through how you create a macro. All you have to do is hit plus and then there are some, you can name it whatever you want. Your macros can be whatever. However, anything that starts with a dollar sign is reserved for a special macro. So let's go into that first one. The first one you see is dollar sign on init. So basically what happens is that anytime you turn on this keyboard, you plug it into USB-C or you save your profile, it's gonna reset, uh, very like a soft reset, and it will run whatever command that is in here. So in my case, I'm just gonna set some variables uh, used for some other scripts, nothing too important. The next macro in this section over here is on key map change. And note here, this is the ID of the key map. You can see I have three key maps, CS2, QWERTY for Mac, QWERTY for PC. And you can see this is the ID Mac, and then this is the ID PC. So for each key map change, whenever I switch, let's say I go from Mac to PC, you can see by the change on the LED display, it's going to execute this command. This is really useful for OS specific settings. In my case, when I use the mouse modifier, the one over here, and I use move my cursor around and stuff like that, I notice that the sensitivity is different for each operating system. In order to solve that, and this is what they recommend, is to change the settings based on whatever operating system you're on. So whenever the PC switches, it'll execute that. I also have a fun little command called set LED text for one second, I'm gonna say moo when I change to PC and yo when I change to Mac. And if you look on your left side, you can see that there's some helper functions on the smart macro reference. For example, changing the initial speed, I can also, I can do it here. If I change it here, it also changes it on this side over here. So this is a little bit of a more user-friendly interface on the left side, on the, sorry, on the right side that allows you to change the settings. So let's go down the list of all my favorite macros. The first one is caps lock shift. And if I click on it, this is the code over here. Uh, pretty simple, 
basically what happens is if I double tap the right key, the right shift, it's gonna enable caps lock. So I hit double tap, this is caps lock. And I hit double tap, this is no longer caps lock. The cool thing about this is that your shift key has dual functions. If you hold it down as you type, it's gonna work like a regular shift key, but if you quickly double tap, it turns into a caps lock key. This makes your keyboard more efficient by collapsing functions into a single key and thereby allowing more keys to exist for other different types of functions. So after you created the macro, all you need to do is assign it to the actual key. And then go to your key map and then you can click here, click on macro, and then just assign it to the actual macro that you created. So another commonly used macro I use every day in order to save time typing is to record a sequence of characters and then store it on the memory. The key thing here is that it's stored on memory. So if you reset the keyboard, it will completely wipe out whatever you wrote. This is really good if you have to type something that is somewhat sensitive or whatever, and you don't wanna to have to type it every time you need to enter it. So the way that I binded it is I need to hold the function layer, hit shift, and then this key. Then here you can see an icon that shows that it's recording something. I'll just type in something really annoying to type, hit enter, and then I'm gonna hold shift again and stop recording. And then you can see that it stopped recording. Now, if I want to enter that same sequence again, I just hold function, but not hold the shift. I just press the button over here and instantly done. So that's gonna save you a ton of time. Did you know that Windows users can hold alt tab, hold the alt key and then hit delete to close a window as said in this instructions over here. Someone made a comment and said, this is awesome, but I need to use both my hands to hit the delete key, which, which is really far on a TKL keyboard. Well, we can change this. This one is one of my favorites. So let's say you have a ton of windows and you want to delete them all. Let's say you don't have access to your right hand. You want to stay focused and have it on your left hand purely. So what I can do is I can quickly transform my key map of D to delete. And in windows, if you alt tab and go to a specific place, hitting delete will actually close that window. So hit delete, delete, move up. And another thing I've done is I've temporarily rebinded I, J, K, and L to arrow, arrow keys. Sometimes I don't want to hit the modifier key in order to change these letters into arrows because it's more comfortable just to go like this. So it temporarily changes letters into arrow keys. And this is the command over here and I simply binded this to my alt key. This is the alt key over here. I'm gonna share all these snippets and codes in the description of this video, and I'll also share you a chat GPT script that you can use in order to ask questions and generate your own scripts based on the UHK smart macro programming language. So one of my favorite macros is to change all the number rows into function keys by long pressing them. This is very handy when I'm editing and programming and stuff like that. It is very common to use function rows. And as you can see, we only have the number rows. So instead of having to hit a modifier key and then press one to engage a function one, I can just long press one and that will trigger F1. Here's what it looks like. So if you look at my functions, you can see F6, F7, F8, F9, F10, F11, F12, all the way down here. So you may have noticed that I binded the function rows on this side over here. And that's because sometimes reaching the F12 all the way over here is way too far of a reach or I simply, I just have my left hand predominantly on the keyboard and my right hand is on the mouse. So as that example, if I press this key, it's gonna hit the minus. If I do shift, it's gonna be normal. But if I long press it, it's gonna open up the console. And that's the shortcut in Chrome F12 to open up the console. So this is really, really handy. If I want to engage F12 to open the Chrome extension, I just long press it and it opens. And having these dual function keys, whether it's on the number row or on the letters, there's no impact on my actual typing experience. I can type really fast. I have no delays or any accidental triggers. And I mentioned before the delete line. Well, this is a very easy macro. It doesn't require any programming. You can just do it from the ground up. What you have is type text key action. You can type in whatever you want. You also have a mouse action. You can add delay and then you can add your own custom command. In the case of deleting a line, it's very easy. You don't need any programming. All you have to do is use the key action. One of my favorite commands is the jiggle start and jiggle stop. This is very helpful if you have a machine that times out after inactivity. One of the most annoying things is being logged out or having to type in your password all the time when you're at home and no one's gonna be accessing your computer, so why not just have the mouse jiggle? Now this is typically something you can buy on Amazon for like $20, but why not have it for free? And this is a way better implementation because when you have that USB plugged into your computer and it's jiggling the mouse, what I've noticed is that it 
moves the cursor a lot every second and that causes things like autocomplete to fail. So this is a way better implementation by using your keyboard. Let me show you how it works. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to make it more obvious. I'm gonna move it, move the cursor 100 pixels and then 100 pixels to the other side. Now, in my case, I've binded this to the function row. So I go to the function, you can see jiggle stop, jiggle start. So I'm gonna just hit function row and I'm gonna hit start. You can see that it's at start and now it's jiggling. So jig and look at my mouse, you can see it's moving. Now, obviously you don't wanna have the cursor move this much or this frequently. You can have it move maybe once every three seconds and just by one pixel and you barely notice it. Even if it's while it's running, you don't need to have the LED update every you know two seconds. You can have that disabled if you want. You can just modify the script. And then if I wanna stop it, I'm gonna hit function, stop, and then stop jiggling. So that is one of my favorite macros. Another macro that is more gaming oriented is this one called CSGO Shift. And what this does is that if you tap the shift once, it'll toggle the shift so that it's being held. So when you move around, you're moving your character in CS, it's gonna be walking. And if I tap it, it's gonna ret return back to its normal state. However, if I hold the shift and then for, for an extended period of time, you know, just like normal use, this is what you typically do in a game, move around, hit WASD and then let go it's just gonna function like a normal shift. So if you ever feel fatigue on your pinky finger for holding it, you know, maybe you wanna walk for a long time in the map, just tap shift, let go of it, and then start walking. The last but not least macro I wanna share is the one shot shift. This is a very simple macro as you can see here. And what it does is that you can tap shift, let go, and then continue tapping on the next word or character or symbol, and it will be capitalized. Now, by default, the timeout between you tapping shift and letting go and then tapping the next letter is about less than one second. But you can actually customize this on the dollar sign on init function that I talked about earlier. In my case, I don't mind having it last longer, so I set it to around four to five seconds. Now, you may not be a programmer or you might find this a little bit overwhelming. Having to go through the documentation and understand all the syntax and stuff like that can be a little bit overwhelming. UHK has an amazing forum where you can ask questions for example, I asked about the alt delete question and I got an answer quite in one day. The One of the creators of these smart macros is very active on the forum, so he's been very helpful. I actually found a way to be more self-sufficient. I've been asking ChatGBT for help, so what I've done is basically copied the entire user guide and reference. And because GBT4 is using the Turbo Edition, it has a long context window, so you can paste all this text, all this markdown, give it a few examples so that it understands what you're asking and then ask future queries. And that way you don't have to ask the forum as much. Now it may not be as accurate or might not get everything correct. So I definitely recommend just posting on the forums if you have a question on how to make a macro. And in, in my case, I actually asked it to extend the original, the alt tab macro. Originally, I just wanted to change D to delete. And now I want it to change the arrow cluster over here, J, K, L, and I. To arrow keys and I wasn't sure how to do that. Well, I asked ChatGPT and it updated the macro correctly and I was able to use this as my new script. So I will leave a link in the description to all these resources that you can use on your ultimate hacking keyboard so that you can create your own smart macros and get on programming. This is a lot more intuitive and user-friendly than programming in C for QMK or ZMK or those other open source firmware, firmwares. So that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments section down below if this video has inspired you to start using advanced macros on your ultimate hacking keyboard, or let me know what your favorite macro is if you already are a power user. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.